This lesson deals with the solution to the ECE202 final exam. You can find this exam solution near the end of the ECE202 ebook. This exam had eight problems with various weights from 20 points to 30 points. Based on the average test score and the standard deviation, I came up with the following curve. 172 points to 200 points was an A, 150 points to 171 points a B, 128 points to 149 points a C, 106 points to 127 points a D, and less than or equal to 105 points was not passing. Problem number one is a phasor analysis, and we have a three-step algorithm for solving this kind of a problem. First step is to transform from the time domain to the frequency domain. So I have a cosine function, so my phasor voltage will be eight at angle zero. The inductance is J omega L, omega is 500, 500 times two milli is equal to one. I have J one ohm for this inductance. For this inductance, I have J 500 times eight milli, and that's equal to J four ohms. The resistors stay resistors, and the capacitor is minus J over omega C. 500 times 500 microfarads reciprocal is equal to four ohms, so minus J four ohms. Step two is to do the analysis in the frequency domain. Here I have series elements, J4 and a minus J4, so they cancel. And I'm just left with four ohms in parallel with four ohms, which is equal to two. So the voltage V of T in the frequency domain becomes our phasor voltage V, and that's gonna be a voltage divider with two ohms and J1. Put this into polar form, we've got two at angle zero, Real part is two, imaginary part is one. Take the square root of the sum of the squares, you're gonna use it in my calculator, and I get 2.24, a little bigger than either of these two, it's a hypotenuse. We're gonna be in the first quadrant, angle's gonna be a little bit less than 45 degrees because this is shorter than this. 26.6 seems reasonable. The overall magnitude is eight times two divided by 2.24, and that turns out to be 7.14, and the angle is zero plus zero minus 26.6. Step three is to transform back into the time domain. So we're gonna put the cosine of omega t between our magnitude and angle. V of t will be 7.14 cosine of 500 t minus 26.6 degrees. So that's our final answer. Gave eight points for each step, and it took one point off if you didn't include the units. Problem number two is to find the waveform f of t from f of s doing a partial fraction expansion. Our first function was 11 times the quantity s plus 3 divided by s times s plus 4. So we could write this as some k1 over s plus some k2 over s plus 4 since we have a proper rational function. Multiply our transfer function by s and let s equal zero. These two cancel. I get 11 times three divided by four, and that's 8.25. Find k2, we'll multiply our transfer function by s plus four and let s equal minus four. So then we have 11 times minus four plus three divided by minus four, and that turns out to be 2.75. f of s is 8.25 over s plus 2.75 over s plus four. The inverse Laplace transform of this is gonna be 8.25 times u of t, and then 2.75 times e to the minus 4t, also times u of t. Present this as a time constant, so we'll take the reciprocal of four, which is 250 milliseconds. The f of t is 8.25 plus 2.75 e to the minus t over tau, where tau is 250 milliseconds, all times u of t. Give four points for each of these answers, and one for u of t. Our next f of s is s plus seven over s squared plus six s plus 25. Let's find the roots of this using the quadratic formula, so minus six, plus or minus six squared minus four times 25 times one divided by two times one. Pull out the minus one as a square root of minus one. And so I get a J and I have 100 minus 36. And that's equal to 64. The square root of that is equal to eight. So my roots then are minus six over two, which is minus three plus or minus J eight over two, which is four. So F of S is some K one over S plus three minus J four. And then the conjugate of both the numerator and denominator is S plus three plus J four, and I get K1 conjugate. So it's gonna find the value of K1. So we'll multiply our transfer function by S plus three minus J four, and let S equal minus three plus J four. So this cancels with this. Plugging in this value for S, I get minus three plus J four plus seven. That's equal to four plus J four. In the denominator, I've got minus three plus J four plus three plus J four. The real parts cancel as before. I get J eight. The overall results then are gonna be four divided by eight and one over J is minus J, so minus J one half, and the J's cancel here and I get one half again. Putting this into polar form, I've got 0.707, an angle of minus 45 degrees. F of T then is twice this value, times E to the minus three T, the real part of our roots, cosine of four T from the imaginary part, and the angle of minus 45. Let's again write this as a time constant, so the one over three is equal to 333 milliseconds. F of t is equal to 1.414 e to the minus t over 333 milliseconds times the cosine of 4t minus 45 degrees all times u of t. 
They gave three, 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 and one for the partial credit. Problem number three is an RC switching circuit, and we're asked to use Laplace transforms and the partial fraction expansion to find the capacitor voltage as a function of time. In our class notes, we have a five-step algorithm for doing this, and the first step is to find the initial conditions. With the switch in this position, prior to t equals zero, the capacitor is an open circuit in steady state, and represent this circuit as a nine volt battery, a 16 ohm resistor, and an open circuit. Now, since no current flows in the open circuit, then there's no drop across this resistor. So zero times 16 is zero. So the rise in voltage is nine, and the drop would be equal to nine. So if nine volts is initial condition. Step two is to transform into the S domain for T greater than zero. So the switch is gonna change state to this position. And then I can represent this as a 12 volt step. And then likewise, the initial condition here is a series nine volt step. And this is shown below. The capacitor has an impedance of one over SC. C was 0.33 microfarad. So the reciprocal of that is 3.03 .03 times 10 to the sixth. The voltage is not across this capacitor, but across the combination of the capacitor and the initial condition. Since I have two voltage sources, I could use superposition to find the voltage V sub C of S. So I'll call that V sub C of S due to the first source and due to the second source. Now setting this source equal to zero, the voltage here would just be a voltage divider of the impedance of this capacitor, voltage divided with the 24 ohms and times 12 divided by S. And then we set this equal to zero. The voltage across here would be the same as the voltage across the resistor. So that's gonna be 24 divided by 24 plus this impedance times this step function nine over S. And this is shown on the next page. The voltage cross capacitor due to the first source, which is the 12 volt step, is the capacitor impedance over the capacitor impedance plus the resistor. Now when you multiply that out, you get 12 over S, 126.25K over S plus 126.25K. Now setting that 12 volt step equal to zero and using the nine volt step, we have the voltage across the resistance over that same value plus the capacitor's impedance. When you multiply that out, you get nine over S plus 126.25K. I'm gonna add these two results together. They have a common S plus 126.25K, but I have an extra S here, so I'll multiply this by S over S. I'm gonna add the two results together. So I got 12 times 126.25K, and then I've got nine S divided by S times the quantity S plus 126.25K. Let's rearrange terms here, put the 9S first and then put this product. It turns out to be 1.515 times 10 to the sixth. Okay, next step is do the partial fraction expansion. I have a proper rational function. I can write this as some K1 over S plus K2 over S plus 126.25K. Multiply this transfer function by S and then let S equal zero. These will cancel. And I get this term 1.515 times 10 to the six divided by 126.25K. And that turns out to be equal to 12. To find K2, I'll multiply the second term, S plus 126.25K, and let S equal the negative of that. These two cancel. So I get nine times minus 126.25K plus 1.515 times 10 to the sixth divided by just S, which is a minus 126.25K. And that turns out to be equal to minus three. And then our last step, we'll find the inverse Laplace transform. So using my K1 and K2, I have V sub C is equal to 12 over S minus three over S plus 126.25K. The inverse transform of this is a step of 12 volts. The next term is minus three times E to the minus 126.25K times T and also times U of T. This is a time constant. So the reciprocal of this is 7.92 microseconds. So V sub C of T is equal to quantity 12 minus three E to the minus T over tau or tau is 7.92 microseconds, all times U of T, and the units are equal to volts. The point distribution is shown along the side, and then the partial credit breakdown in red. In problem number four, we're given a transfer function, of V out over V in, is equal to minus 10, S plus 10 over S plus 1,000. And then we're asked to plot the magnitude and angle versus omega. Our first step is to replace S by J omega. And then to make it look like the forms that we had in our chapter on body plots. I'm gonna pull out a 10, make this a one, and I'll pull out a thousand to make this a one. So then I have J omega divided by 10, and then J omega divided by a thousand. And then in front, I've got minus 10, pull out a 10 and pull out a thousand. So I've got minus 100 over a thousand, which is minus one tenth, and then times one plus J omega over 10, and then the reciprocal of one plus J omega over a thousand. This is a form one, a form four, and a form five. My lowest frequency is 10, my highest frequency is 1K. So I'm gonna go back one decade and forward one decade. So I'll start at one radian per second and go to 10 kiloradians per second. And that's gonna be four decades. So one, two, three, four. Use about an inch for the basic unit. Plot the first term, 20 log of the magnitude is the 20 log of 1 tenth, which is 10 to the minus one. So it's minus 20 dB. So it's a straight line across. 
The form four has an omega C of 10, so at 10 radians per second, I'm gonna increase at 20 dB per decade and below that, just zero dB per decade. For the form five, omega C is 1K, so I'll go over to 1K and then drop at 20 dB per decade. I gotta find the regions where the slopes are constant, so here's one. And here's another one. We add up all the slopes. I've got zero plus zero plus zero. The net slope is zero dB per decade. And just pick one point that's easy. In fact, they're all the same. So zero plus zero minus 20 is just minus 20. Now the slope in this region is plus 20, zero and zero. So I've got a slope of 20 dB per decade. So if we'll go from minus 20 to zero to plus 20 in two decades. Now in this last region, I've got plus 20, minus 20 dB per decade and zero. So the slope is zero. It's gonna level out. For the phase angle, I have a minus sign in front of my transfer function. That can be a plus 180 or a minus 180. I picked minus 180. So it's a dotted line. The form four had an omega C of 10. So I'll go back a decade to one, zero degrees, and then increase at 45 degrees per decade for two decades to a value of plus 90 degrees. So my omega C was equal to 10, and I'm at 45 degrees at 10 radians per second. And lastly, the form five, I had an omega C of 1K. Go back a decade, it's zero. Go forward a decade, it's minus 90. I've got to add up all my three curves, and again, I'll look for the regions where the slopes are constant. Here's one region, here's another region, and here's another one. To add up all the slopes, it's zero plus zero plus zero, so a slope of zero dB per decade, and then add up a value, zero plus zero plus minus 180, so minus 180. Can increase at 45, zero, and zero, so 45 degrees per decade. For two decades, I'll go to minus 90 degrees. Now in this region, I've got zero, minus 45 degrees per decade, and zero for the slope. Well, now we're gonna have a net slope of minus 45 degrees per decade, and we're gonna drop for two decades. We'll go back to minus 180. And over here, the slope is zero, zero, and zero, so it's level out. I picked the minus 180 instead of the plus 180 so that my final answer would be between plus and minus 180. You don't have to do that. You could have picked the plus 180. I gave nine points for the transfer function, so I gave three points for breaking this into the forms and then eight points for each body plot, and you could break that down into two points per graph that was drawn. Problem five has two proofs. The first one is to show that the Laplace transform of A F one of T plus B times F two of T is equal to A F one of S plus B times F two of S. This actually is our property of linearity. Let's apply our definition of Laplace transform. So taking the Laplace transform of this quantity is taking the integral from zero minus to infinity and multiplying that by e to the minus st dt. Now the integral of the sum is the sum of the integrals, and bring this integral inside for the two terms that are here, and bring out the constant a and b. I've got a times the integral from zero minus to infinity of f1 of t times e to the minus st dt, and then bring out the b, and I've got the integral from zero minus to infinity of f2 of t times e to the minus st. But this is our definition of f1 of s and our definition of f2 of s multiplied by a and b. And that's our proof. The next proof was to show that if the above is true, that the algebraic sum of the s-domain voltage rises equals the algebraic sum of the s-domain drops around in a closed path. Let's start in a time domain. So well, these are our rises in voltage and these are our drops in voltage. Then taking Laplace transfer on both sides of the equation, we have the following. And then by the property of linearity, this then is just simply the sum of the Laplace transforms of the individual terms. So V1 of S plus V2 of S through V sub J would equal V sub K of S through V sub N of S. That's a proof of the Kirchhoff's voltage law in the S domain. In problem number six, I gave you the Fourier series from the class notes and a sawtooth waveform and asked you to find the term B sub N in the Fourier series. And the definition of it is right here. So can you do the integration on the waveform? This is the same example that's in chapter 13 on pages four to six. You can look in the table of contents and find the video where I did that derivation and the results are on the next page at the bottom. As we show in chapter 13, this was equal to minus a over n pi for all n. This is worth 25 points, and I took five points off for each error, and this followed the work through. Problem number seven was given a transformer with the dot notation, trying to solve for the voltage V2 of t. Well, from our class notes in chapter 15, we had that V1 is equal to L di1 dt plus or minus m di2 dt. Now since V1 has the plus terminal by the dot, and V2 has the minus terminal by the dot, then M is negative. Now, since this is an open circuit, then there's no current that's flowing out, and so the value of the current is zero, and therefore the derivative is also zero. I'm just gonna lose this term and just have L1 times DI1 dt. Our second equation from the transformer equations is that V2 is equal to plus or minus M DI1 dt plus L2 DI2 dt. 
Again, we picked the minus sign because of the minus sign with the dot here and the plus with this one. And again, because the current is zero, so is its derivative. And so we're just left with minus m di1 dt. So I have the value of v2 in terms of di1 dt. I can just go grab this here, and it's going to be equal to v1 divided by l1. The value of v2 then is minus m, which is 35 milli. v1 was 30 times the cosine of 200 t, and l1 was 100 milli henrys. Minus 35 milli times 30 divided by 100 milli is equal to minus 10.5. This problem is worth 20 points, and it gave 5 points for each of these equations and 10 for the evaluation. It took one point off if there was no unit indicated with the answer. Problem number eight is a frequency domain circuit given a pair of wires and a load and a generator that's 240 volts RMS at angle zero and at 60 hertz. And we're gonna find some of the quantities of this circuit. First is to find the current flowing in this loop. What's gonna be the voltage divided by the total impedance? I got 240 at angle zero, and I'm gonna add up the real parts and I get 0 0.2, 4, and 0 0.2, that's 4.4. And the imaginary parts are two plus 0 0.06 and plus 0 0.06, so that's 2.12. Putting that in the polar form, I get 4.88 at 25.7 degrees. So the overall magnitude is a ratio of 240 to 4.88, and that's 49.18, and the angle is zero minus 25.7. The units here are amps, but it's RMS. Gave three points for magnitude, three for angle, took off one if you didn't indicate the units. Now that I know the current, I can find the voltage across the load by just only multiplying by the impedance of the load, which is four plus J2. Putting that into polar form, I get 4.47 at angle 26.56. Multiply the magnitudes, I get 219.8, and then add the angles, and I get a plus 0.86. Units are volts RMS. Three points for each answer, minus one if you didn't indicate the units. Next question is to find the apparent power generated. That's gonna be the voltage of our generator times the current coming out of it conjugate. That's I sub L conjugate. 240 at angle zero, the current was 49.18 at an angle of minus 25.7, but the conjugate's changing the sign of that. If you multiply these two, you get 11,800, and the angle is going to be a plus 25.7. Putting this in the rectangular form, I have a real part and an imaginary part. The real part is in watts. The imaginary part is in vars. Three points for each, minus one for each answer without a unit. And then lastly, what is the power factor? It's the cosine of the angle of the voltage minus the angle of the current. The voltage was 0.86, and the current was a minus 25.7. I'm taking the cosine of 26.56, but this is a plus 26.56. The cosine of that is 0.894, and because this is positive, it's a lagging power factor. It's worth six, three for the value, and three for indicating whether it was lagging. And this is the solution to the final exam for ECE 202. Lastly, let me show you how to determine your grade in the course. So you go back to page one of this solution. We had a curve for this final, like we had for each of the exams. What I do is assign the highest A as a five, the lowest A as a four, the lowest B as a three, the lowest C as a two, and the lowest D as a one. Now, if you didn't pass an exam, that's just equal to zero. So if you're halfway between 172 and 200, you have a 4.5. If you're three quarters of the way between 150 and 171, you have a 3.75. So you have a value like this for every exam. Here's how you can compute your grade. Suppose on the first exam, you had a 3.75. We're three quarters of the way between the A and the B range. Suppose on the second exam you had a 3.33, and on the third exam you had a 4.25, and maybe on the final you did really well with a 4.5. The overall grade now is numbers between 0 and 5. We had three one hour exams and a two hour final. So we just add up those three hour exams plus the final twice. If you divide by 5, you'll get a number between 0 and 5. In this case it was 4.066, and that would be the A range. If you had a 4.5, that would really be having an A. Plus. If you had a 4.75, that'd really be having the equivalent of an A++. Congratulations, you have successfully completed ECE 202.